every talk you give, you need to be an incredible expert on it. Now, before people go, oh God, that's a bit harsh. You only need to be an expert on one single thing. And it's not the presentation topic. You need to be an expert on your content. And what's the difference between the topic and your content? When, when people give talks, we often have suffered from what we call imposter syndrome. We often think, am, am I smart enough to be giving this talk? Or what if the audience members are more informed than me? And, and often when we're talking about product, sometimes we can never be as experienced as the customers attending our session because they may have had decades of experience with that particular product where we may be somewhat new to it. But one thing you'll always have more expertise on than anyone else in the room is the actual content you're delivering not the actual nuts and bolts, but the way it's framed, how many slides you have, what slide comes next, etc. The actual content of your presentation is the thing I think we should really force ourselves to be absolutely experts on, which means a lot of, lot of rehearsal. I hate to say it, this is one of the talks I'm not enjoying, I won't enjoy giving because this is a one-off talk. I probably won't give this talk again. I prefer giving talks lots and lots and lots of times because every single time, it gets better, it makes it for a better connection with the audience. People talk about doing full rehearsals. I'm, I'm not a big fan of full rehearsals. I'm a huge fan of doing partial rehearsals, just sitting there and just going through and visualizing what you're going to be talking about, what the story will be behind each set of slides coming up. You hear the term, you know, when, you go to, when we used to go to conferences face-to-face, -face, I'm just polishing my slides. There'll be someone in the corner just you know, tapping away on their laptop, coming up with just slight modifications. What they're really doing is visualizing themselves giving the talk. If, if sitting in front of a mirror and, and doing a talk, etc., doing the whole talk works for you, fantastic. For me, it's just repeatedly going through the slides over and over and the demos over and over and over again. And it reinforces how I think I'm going to flow my intonation throughout the talk. So let's talk about content for a second. For my view, minimalist generally wins every time. And the reason I say that is, let's face it, we're now living in a TikTok kind of world. The audience now, especially the younger generation, have those much shorter attention spans. As you can read here, if there's enough words on your slide that the audience has to stop and spend more than 15 to 20 seconds with their time away from you as the presenter, because in a virtual or even a real world, that's up on the screen, they're not listening to you anymore. I'm sure you're not listening to me anymore. You've got this, all this stuff to read and read. 15 to 20 seconds nowadays is an eternity. The moment you've lost their interest, you've lost their attention because they're digesting this enormous amount of content on a slide, this is right next to them. Oh, my phone just buzzed. Oh, it's a Twitter, it's a tweet, it's a DM, it's an Instagram, it's a Facebook post, it's a new YouTube video, it's blah, blah, blah. You lost them. For me, especially in this world, I almost hate to say it because my generation being, you know, I'm, I'm sort of well into middle age now, my generation is, you know, we like the, writ the written word. We, you know, I generally read blog posts, but you know, the, the next generation of tech professionals coming along are much more invested in shorter frame sets, shorter amounts of information, stack overflow, videos, etc. TikTok. A slide is really a glance, and each slide for me is then a hook that leads onto the next slide. What we're trying to do is give them small snippets of information that then you can speak to, each one being a hook to keep them engaged. If you have a lot of details that you need to you know, convey, save it for the handouts or save it for your blog post. That could be a hook in its own right. Simple slides, if you need to see more, read my blog. Another hook that gets them motivated to involve, to get loyal to you. That might mean doubling up. If I'm talking about, say, in memory, my slides, if I was doing a talk, might look something like this. I'm going to talk in detail to each of those points about the columnar format and its real-time synchronization and, and it's not just a case. But it might well be the case that your slides might need to be padded out for a different audience. That will require more work on our part. And that, yeah, thanks a lot, Connor. But I think there is a different audience here. The user community needs to see the minimalist set so they stay engaged through the content and will listen to your voice. You might then wanna hand that content off to someone else to present. It may look like this. You might give them both sets of content. I'm lazy, what I tend to do is I'll have the latter set and I'll literally put animations to remove the elements that I don't want. And therefore one slide deck can actually serve both purposes. Mm -hmm.